race was well underway and I was really struggling with the riding technique on this type of surface. I gingerly made my way over the course and I was surprised at how exhausted I was after tackling just a few dunes. Taking part in this event was Kurt Nickel, who's won seven British motocross championships and has been a runner-up in four world titles. And I caught up with him just before the race. Kurt, how many times have you actually been involved in the uh, in the sand race? This will be the fifth time I've been to Western. Um, I did the big race in France as well once at the 2K, um, so it'll be my sixth big sand race. What actually is it that brings you down here when you're competing on the international circuit and here there's a lot of novice riders as well? What, what, what brings the guys down here to compete? It's, it's a big race. It's in the off-road calendar it is a very big event. It takes a lot of publicity. So, I mean, basically the teams and the manufacturers you know, want to come down. I, I work for KTM and uh, for KTM this, this represents a big race in the year. Uh, probably bigger than some of the national championships as an individual thing. Is there a hazard of driving on sand that is completely alien to you? Not really. Not the sand itself. I mean, we're quite used to racing sand as in, on motocross tracks, so uh, the, the difference is purely and simply the number of riders and the difference in ability. I mean, normally if I go to a start line, there'll be 30 other riders on the start line, all of pretty similar ability. Um, and you know, you, you might see them at the start, you may even crash at the start and have to pass some of them, um, but they're all going pretty much the same speed here. You've got guys that are going very, very slowly. Do you, do you find it quite frustrating as you come into the, one of the dunes and there's a load of unfortunately novice guys who have piled up and they're all... I mean, is, does it, does it, do you find that quite frustrating? Does it affect your flow? No, it's part of the race. Um, it's, it ends up as being part of the challenge. I mean, you've got to look for a way through because uh, what tends to happen here, there will be a big queue on the second lap. You know that before you start and you've got to find your way around it. Uh, other things that happen in beach races, I mean, the fences get knocked down inevitably and the, when somebody knocks a fence down, everyone goes through it and you've got to be sharp enough to not be the guy who's stuck on the top of the dune when everyone else is going inside you through the fence. So, I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it's all part of it and you have to look for it all the time. Do you, do you find it very physical when you're racing? I mean, do, do you physically get tired? Yeah, well, this is a very tiring race, three hours. I mean, motocross is 35 minutes. At the end of it, you know you've done a race for sure. Uh, and we'll probably end up doing 22, 23 laps, something like that, round here. And it's very, very physical, yeah. What are you hoping to finish today? I'm hoping to win, of course, but uh, I've never done particularly well here. I'm not a guy that likes to take huge risks jumping over the top of uh, slower riders, so that's my downfall normally. But I've got a chance. I've got a good bike this year. I've never done it on a four-stroke before, and I think the four-stroke would be much better down the beach. So, fingers crossed. I'll I'll I'll, I shall look out for you going past me. Okay. An hour into the race and some riders are suffering from fatigue. Just manhandling your bike out of deep ruts and kick-starting the machine is exhausting. In an endurance race, the bikes have to be refuelled and it gives riders a chance to take on fluids. Unbelievably, it took me an hour to complete my first lap, where the top boys would have completed several. This may be the biggest and dirtiest event of the year, but I did take part in an event where size didn't matter. I'm here at Kingsham Raceway in Wales. Now I'm here to experience a track day with a little bit of a difference. This is Minimoto. You've been involved in, in Minimoto for, for over five years. What actually is it? It's uh, The sport itself is all about racing miniature motorcycles, a third of the scale of a proper bike, powered by a little 39cc engine. Um, it's all about fun, just low cost. Now, where did the sport actually originate from? The majority of it originated from Italy and Japan. It's, it seems like a great training sport for young kids who want to get into road racing. There's a lot of the Italian riders such as Valentino Rossi and Max Biaggi have all done mini motos and for quite some time, not just a couple of years, they were involved for five, six years before they went on to proper bikes. Dave, within this sport you're classed as a heavy. Uh, what does all that mean? Well, basically I'm, a, I'm above 12 stone. That's 
the category for my size, it's a heavy group. And then you've got the lights at a ten and a half stone. And then you've got the super lights around about sort of nine and a half stone. So I battled to stay within my weight group to make myself competitive. Is it, I mean, is it similar to a jockey then? Do you actually have to, sort of when you go home, somebody says, oh, you're going to show some fish and chips, and you think, oh, no, I can't do that, I'll go for a salad. I mean, is it something you have to do? I do, yeah. <laughs> you leave the sweet stuff alone, <laughs> That's do you? That's it, yeah, stay away from the cakes. Hey, Richard, you're in the, in the super light category. Now, it actually is just literally a miniature size racing bike. Yeah, that's and right. Obviously, it's got all the fairings on here. I mean, is this for show, or do you find yourself getting behind and...? No, it's just for show, really. I mean, no way you're going to get your head behind that screen. It's just <laughs> impossible. It is just for show. Yeah. And, I mean, do you find yourself having to slipstream people for overtaking? Does that...? You can do that, yeah. Obviously, if, like, the guy in front's a bit big, you can get him right. Try and tuck yourself right up, and you can actually feel the slip. Can you? Just feel yourself get sucked in and then pull out and <laughs> overtake. Now, I noticed you were leaning forward on the, on the front of the bike when you're going down the main straight. Yeah. Why do you do that? I mean, if you sit further back, do I detect that the front wheel will come up then? Yeah, if you're coming out of the corner and you're not crouched over the front of the bike and you lean back a bit, it's just... It's a little bit... Woo. I mean, you don't have to hang off it as much as a big bike because you're so low to the ground already and your knee's half sticking out. And so. do you get your knees down? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's awesome. You think racing has a glamorous side, but this is, this is reality. Throwing on a pair of leathers in the back of a car while the weather starts to rain. I've very fortunately been given a bike for uh, to go and have a, a go, but um, it's on slick tyres, the rain's just started, and they're about to start racing, so let's stick a pair of leathers on, see how we get on. Chris, can you give me any tips that you, that you do? That I, maybe I might be able to use your tips to go a bit quicker. Um, in the rain, it's not very... It's not very good taking the uh, proper lines that you do in the dry because if when a lot of bikes slide in the rain they leave a load of rubber on the track and it makes you slip. So the best thing to do is either go on the inside of it or the outside of it to stop you coming off. So swing wide out of the corners then, do it. Use all the, yeah. is it all, using all the track then, is it? Yeah. Wow, that's great. Oh, well, I'll give that a go then. Unfortunately, the weather is very much against us today, so I've had to actually put a waterproof on because it really is lashing down. But I'm equipped, I've got all my gear on, and now I'm ready for the race. Oh. Well, I have to say, I do feel a bit like a gorilla on a sort of circus bicycle. But it's a very strange, a very strange sport, this. You have to contort yourself into, into an unbelievable position to actually ride the bikes. But once you get going, it's very competitive. It handles exactly the same as a sports bike. And I could do with a little few more horses for me to give it a bit more of a kick. But great sport, very enjoyable. Well, unfortunately, as you can see, the heavens really have opened. But, hey, it's Minimoto. The Western Sam Race is a strange event. It's very competitive for some, and for others, just the finish would be a result. An endurance race of any form is about a personal goal. This event really illustrates determination at whatever level you enter. As the race grinds to a halt, I'm one of the 690 riders who finished out of a thousand starters. Wayne Partington came a respectable 168th after being held up by a few back markers. Kirk Nickel came 10th after leading the race for two laps and then experiencing mechanical problems. And the event was won by Ben Taylor. Well, there you have it, sand racing. I was told from the start it was endurance racing and it really is. I can only admire the guys that have actually spent three hours getting around this track because I was knackered after a couple of laps. All I want to do now is, is actually thank Phil Roberts for his pit crew and his team who've been absolutely amazing today.